Better when you ask for the bus and service, please. We just thank you for this opportunity to come into your house on this day. We ask that you would bless the service and bless the song as we lift our voices and praise to you. All right, we're going to start with, I have decided to follow Jesus. It's 183 in the course. I have decided. Yeah. 
faith line, the good old faith line, chorus number 57. I'm on the faith line, I'm the good old faith line.
Um, and so she's currently in hospital, and uh, so we are praying for her and, of course, for Earl. Um, as he's without his partner there at home. And uh, so we're praying that the doctors would have wisdom as they are looking at things. And I guess they have her foot in a cast, but it might be coming out, so they can put another one. Well, anyway, there's all kinds of things going on, uh, but we need to pray. All right, We need to pray that God will quicken and strengthen. Um, and for our sister Sylvia in Romania, we want to remember her as well. It, sometimes, you know, there's a, a call for prayer, and there's an urgent need, and then, you know, when the Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing, well, part of that is, don't stop praying, because the work isn't, it's not finished yet, it's not over. And until the Lord has completed the work, and we want to hold on, and we're just going to keep praying. It's the same, there's a, a young girl in Mexico that a little while back Glenda wrote about. Uh, Jocelyn, I think is her name. And she was in the hospital with a heart problem, a heart condition. So that improved, but she's still in the hospital. And because the Mexican system is not like our system, and there aren't you know, all kinds of welfare sort of coverage and help like that, the last thing Glenda wrote, and I haven't read recently, was that she was sending some money down there because the mother has to stay with the daughter who's in the hospital, and while she's staying with the daughter in the hospital, she can't work. So they don't have any money for food. Um, and it's just as simple as that. You don't work, you don't have any money for food. So in a case like that, where she's staying close to her daughter in the hospital, um, you know, she needs that support. So there are just so many needs. Um, and the blessing that we have, of course, is that we know a Savior who can meet all of those needs. And uh, we are also blessed uh, to be able to help in some way. Uh, and certainly, uh, we can help by praying and holding up those that are in need and praying that the Lord would meet them and quicken them. So don't forget all of those, all of the needs. There are many, many others. I'm just uh, thinking, just off the, I'm just right now thinking about Sister Graham. Uh, we haven't seen Sister Graham for quite some while again, right? And she she was gone and, and struggling through some things, and then had come back into the church. And I, for one, really appreciated. Uh, her praise and her being there at the back. And now, again, it seems fear is gripping people, right? And so, once again, uh, she's uh, trapped by Satan. And so we need to remember her in our prayers as well. And so many, many, many people that we want to remember in prayer. And in your families, I'm sure there are some, as there are in mine, um, you know, whether they're little or big. Uh, they need a touch from the Lord. Um, and this evening, let's start in Psalm 71. You know, I often have a title, just often for my own purposes, and, and it tends to sum up what the message is going to be about. I'm going to save it until maybe towards the end, uh, and maybe you'll remember it, and I think it will uh, assist you in what we're going to take a look at this evening, but I'm going to read in Psalm 71, actually the first 14 verses, uh, it's a, a slight bit longer than that, but we'll just do the first 14 verses, there are two verses in there, and one particular word that I want to zero in on this evening, Psalm 71, in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust, let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness, and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me, and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. 
For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise, and with thy honor all the day. Cast me not off in time of old age, forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay waste for my sorry, wait for my soul, take counsel together, saying, God hath forsaken him, persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. O my God, make haste for my help. Let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. But I will hope continually and and will yet praise thee more and more. I want to spend a little bit of time this evening looking at this idea of hope. Now there's much in this particular psalm, and we see it as a psalm here that is a prayer for help. Um, and there are some trials, obviously, that are uh, going, uh, being, you know, beset upon David in this particular case, and he's going through some hardship. Um, but he has, among all of the different blessings, he has hope. And so in verse 5, it says, For thou art my hope, O Lord God, thou art my trust from my youth. And then he says again in verse 14, But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. There are some words, in the English language at least, that we sometimes think all mean the same. And in some cases, it can be a little bit confusing to try and sort of decipher what's the difference between this term and what's the difference between this other one. Let me give you an example. If you turn to Hebrews chapter 11, it's a familiar verse. And there are two words in this particular verse that often we interchange. And this evening I want to just take a little bit of a look at the fact that we really can't interchange. They are definitely connected. So in Hebrews 11 and 1 it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This idea of faith and hope. Sometimes we use the two terms as meaning the same thing. And they're close. You know, if you uh, were to look, and, and I, I looked up a few different things, and there were charts, you know, and they were going through what does faith mean, and what does hope mean, many of the things were if not the same, we're very close to the same, and yet they must mean something a little bit different. Because that verse there in Hebrews 11 and 1 uses the two terms, one supporting the other. When it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So it doesn't say, now hope is the substance of things that you had faith for. It, it, the order is important, and the meaning of the words is also really, really important. We often spend a lot of time looking at faith, which is good. But tonight, let's just spend a little bit of time looking at hope. Now, here's the difference, and you will see this in a dictionary definition, even a King James uh, Bible definition um, that you can look up, by the way. If you didn't know this, if you look for a definition of a word that's in the King James Bible, there is a dictionary, a King James Version dictionary, of what these words mean based on the time in which they were used and they were written. So that's very, very important. If I tell you that faith, we'll start with the one that we're most familiar with, 
just a very short little definition, and of course the Bible gives us the perfect definition. But faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Okay? A complete trust or confidence in someone or something. That's what faith is. And I want to put emphasis on the word in. So we are trusting in someone. Okay? Hope, on the other hand, is defined as a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. So my title this evening is Faith in Hope For. And in that short little title, I hope that by the time we finish this this evening, and it won't be too long, that you will see how that's different. How we have faith in God, and we have hope for the fulfillment of the promises of God. They're two different things, right? And when we look at it in Scripture, the idea of hoping for something, we have to remember that our faith and our hope are different from the world's faith and the world's hope. And that's something we have to maintain. This is really, really important, right? Because people who are not Christians will say they have faith in... And then they might say the government, or they might say in a president, or in a prime minister, or they have faith in some natural worldly person or a natural organization. That's what the world does. Okay? When we as God's people talk about faith in, it's always faith in God. There's no one else that as God's children we have faith in. Because there is no one else that is perfect. Everything else, and I didn't you look at those verses that are fami we're familiar with, right? But the Bible tells us the arm of flesh, it will fail. Your best friend, the one who seems to be, you know, will never fail you or forsake you, if that is a natural person or a natural organization, it's going to fail. Just like your own arm of flesh will fail you at some point in time. So, as God's people, when we look at the scripture, it reminds us over and over and over again that our faith is in Christ. Our faith is in God. And when we look at this idea of hope, and a lot of people will use that word, right? Oh, I'm hoping that tomorrow it's going to be sunny. I'm hoping it doesn't snow on Sunday, like they say that it might. I'm hoping that the winter will be short and the summer will be long. Right? There are all kinds of things that we use that word for. But as God's people, when we really talk about hope, our hope for something to take place, that we are confident that it's going to happen, isn't again in what people say they might do. Our hope rests in what the Word of God tells us that God is going to do. See, hope and faith are not some fantasy kind of um, thing that you know people might dream about and wish for. That's not how the Word is meant to be used. Okay? We are very specific. Faith in God, hope in the promises and in the Word of God. All the gifts that the Lord has given us. If you look up then in a concordance, or you look online, and you ask for all of the scripture verses that contain the word hope, or that have this idea of hope, 
It's interesting that most of the verses, or at least half or more, are actually verses that don't have that word in it at all. But they are verses that contain the promises of God. All the blessings, all the things that the Lord says that we as God's people can have today, and all of the things that the Scripture tells us we can have in the future that the Lord has for us. Okay? So we're not hoping on something that has no foundation. We're hoping, and our hope is, for the promises of God. It's a slightly different way of looking at things, right? And you see, Christian hope always results in joy. I'm going to repeat that, okay? Our hope, your hope, always results in joy and rejoicing. Let me show you that from the scripture. If you go to um, Romans chapter 5, I'm just going to look at three verses in Romans, okay? Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. It says, By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. See, very often faith and hope are connected together in the scripture. You're going to see that, right? But remember, it is this faith, right? If we look at this, a faith in God that helps us then to grab a hold of the promises that we are hoping for. And see, there is nothing that the Lord has promised. There's nothing in God's word that he has said for God's children that's going to make us sad. Right? I mean, God is not going to do something to you and to me as long as we abide in his word, as long as we're following, so I'm assuming that part. Right? But if we're doing what the Lord is asking us to do and living the way he's asking us to live, then the outcome is always positive. It's never negative. And so when we trust in what the Lord has said to us, we hope and it always brings us joy. See, in the world... If we use, uh, let's just use a Christmas example, right? There are all kinds of things that I'm sure that maybe when you were younger, or if you think about children today, they're hoping that they might receive at Christmas. They have a list, right? And many, many times, there are things that they hope they would get at Christmas that they don't get. It's just impossible. Right? For a parent to purchase everything that a child hopes they're going to get. And so, while you do see happiness on Christmas morning or in the evening on the 24th, depending on when those presents are unwrapped, there's also occasionally some disappointment. Because they were hoping for something and they didn't get it. See, in the natural, our hopes often lead to disappointment. But in God's Spirit, and in the Word of God, this is another blessing that we have as Christians, right? Our hope always results in rejoicing. Another verse that tells us that, Romans 12 and 12. Romans 12 and 12. Right? This is part of a list, but in this particular verse it says, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and continuing instant in prayer. Right? So here is another example where rejoicing and joy are attached to hope. Also in Romans 15 and verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. It says, now the God of hope, right? So our hope comes from the Lord. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Now this particular verse 
brings us another step a little bit further and helps us to see that this hope that we have as God's people comes through the Holy Spirit, comes by God's Spirit. All right? And so we pray, Lord, fill us with your Spirit. And as we are filled with his Spirit, we have joy, we have rejoicing, and we have faith in God for the blessings and promises that he said he will give us. This is why we can pray in faith believing for, that's the hoping part, right, for healing. But remember, when I say that, it's not the same kind of hope that the world has. It's important. I want to really drive that home. So when I say we pray in faith believing, hoping for healing, I'm not contradicting myself there as a Christian. Okay? It's not, I'm not saying I have faith, but then hope. See, sometimes when we use that word, if you think of it in the natural, there's doubt attached to it, right? The world, when the world says, I hope, eh, maybe yes, maybe no. But when a Christian says, I hope, remember, our hope is for the promises of God. So there's no maybe yes and maybe no. It's for sure. Okay? And so it's a different way of using that term, and it's important that we hold on to that, because... God is our source of hope. Um, Psalm 119. Verse, that's that long psalm, so it's verse 114. Psalm 119, verse 114. It says, speaking now to the Lord, Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. That's actually the verse that started this message in my mind. It got me thinking about this. I hope in thy word. Remember that. Okay? We're not hoping in maybes. We're not hoping in what people say to you. Our hope is in the Word of God. Okay? And that is what we believe for. That is what we know to be truth. Okay? And so, even though you may not see it yet, and this is where that verse, faith is the substance of things hoped for, right? It's, maybe it's not here yet right now. Okay? Maybe that healing hasn't completely taken place yet. Maybe, you know, that problem hasn't been removed completely yet. Or you're, you don't have that victory completely yet. But we have faith in God. Trusting in Him because He said it's going to happen. Therefore, our hope is in that. Knowing that it will come and that's a real blessing that we as God's people are able to grab a hold of. In Jeremiah chapter 17, let me close with this particular verse. And really, in many ways, this verse in Jeremiah chapter 17 again combines the idea of faith and hope. They're very, very important, yet they are different, right? Remember, faith in, hope for. Faith in God, someone, hope for something, his blessings, all right? And so it says in Jeremiah 17, verse 7, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. Okay, that, that's faith putting our absolute trust in the Lord, and then it says, and whose hope the Lord is. Okay? We're not hoping in the Lord. He is our hope. Because everything that He has said 
is God. This is why the Word of God is God. Okay? This is His Spirit that the Lord has given to us. And as God has poured out His Spirit, He's given of Himself. And so, and whose hope the Lord is. Okay? And so we put our hope in what the Lord has promised us and we're hoping for all of these things, knowing that they will come to pass. Faith in, hope for. Remember that. And it helps us, helps me at least, to keep those terms straight. Faith in God, hope for His blessings, His promises, and all the things that are in the Scripture. Let's all stand together. And so tonight, as we pray, we pray because we have faith in God and we have that hope knowing that He is going to hear our prayers and answer our prayers. And so those people that I mentioned, let's remember them in prayer this evening. If I could add, uh, one of our grandchildren, Naomi, is continuing to struggle um, and with respiratory things. And so she's had a cold and she has a cough and then she has a high fever. And then, and then of course, if you've had children or you know families that have had children, what happens? If you have more than one, it goes from one child to the next child. And then just when the one's getting better, the other one gets it and it goes back and forth and back and forth. What are we praying for? Healing, yes. But in this particular case, I also ask you to pray that the Lord continue to speak to that family. Amen. Right? Because that's a family that has said, we don't believe. Right? They've rejected. Both of those parents have rejected. And that's not easy for me to say, but that's the fact. That's 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 everybody makes a choice. Right? But as God's people. We want the Lord to speak to those hearts, right? Whether they be here in our families here or in Romania, right? We're looking for a healing for our sister Borka's sister, but we're looking for salvation and the Lord to speak to her, right? And that's the most critical healing that we can get, that we can have. And so we believe and have faith in God hoping for that gift of salvation, knowing that if we receive it, it is there. And we're so thankful for that. So let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, on this Remembrance Day, and as many have remembered people that have given so much, we also want to thank you, Lord, for your sacrifices and for the many, many gifts that you have given us. Help us as God's people not to forget the gifts, the promises of God, that they are there, and we can stand upon those promises. They are solid. They are rooted and grounded in the truth, and they come not from some person or not from some idol that uh, flesh has created. Those promises, Lord, come from you. God has said them. God has proclaimed those gifts and those promises upon His children. And so, God, I'm reminded of how great a blessing it is to have you to lean on, to have you to call upon, to have you to cry out to when I have no one else and there's no other solution. But Lord Jesus, we can have faith in you and know, dear Lord Jesus, that your word is true. And as the scripture says, we have our hope in you, dear Lord, because you will make all of these things come to pass. God will make his promises come to pass. There's no question. And Lord, we come against the enemy. We come against those that whisper doubts and fears and put questions and try and put those in our hearts and minds. No. In Jesus' name, we ask your Lord Jesus, 
put a wall of fire, a wall of protection. May your spirit seal us from the enemy's devices so that we will not waver in our faith in you and we will not question the promises and the hope that we have in you fulfilling everything that is in your word. God, we want to remember the many, many that have a need, a spiritual need, a physical need, an emotional need, financial needs. The, the world is full of needs. And Lord God, we're blessed to know where the answers can be found. And so in your time, Lord God, I know that you will reveal all things. And in your time, dear Lord Jesus, you will answer prayer as it is best for those prayers to be answered. We put our faith and trust in you. And we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for the hope that we have in you, in the rock of ages, and in the word that you have shared with us. So be with us now as we pray. Lord, you see our hearts, and you know the trial or the test, the things, dear Lord, the burdens we might be carrying. Help us to remember to bring our burdens to Calvary, to bring them to the foot of the cross, and to leave them there, knowing God will take care of it. God will take care of it and me and you. We thank you in Jesus' name.